The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Uh, <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's see what's going on with the great Gildersleeve. Hello? Miss Fenwick? Guess who this is. Nope. Guess again. You're cold. Guess again. <laughs> How'd you guess? Did you have a good time last night? Yeah, me too. Hmm. Nothing going on there. Well, uh, let's see what's going on with his nephew, Leroy. There must be something going on because at this very moment, Leroy is tearing down State Street as if the devil were after him. <laughs> Looking for sanctuary, he plunges into TV's pharmacy, stumbles, and falls flat on his face. Why, careful there. Hmm, you hurt yourself, Leroy? Don't let him get me. Where can I hide? Hide from what? In the phone booth. Don't let him in, Mr. Feeney. Don't let him come in. Who? Snyder. Don't tell him I'm here. Well, who's Snyder? Now, what's he shut himself in there for? <laughs> Leroy! Open up! Yeah? What's all the excitement? What are you running away from? Snyder! He's chasing me! Well, who's Snyder? One of the big kids. Every day he chases me home from school. Oh, a bully, huh? Yeah, that's mm. just what he is, a big bully. All he does is pick on little kids. He's scared to fight anybody his own size. All he does is twist kids' arms and make them drop their books. You know what he does? He sticks a pin in his shoe and kicks them with it when the teacher isn't looking, so they'll holler. He said if he ever caught me, he'd... Look out! Well, what's the matter? That's just a lady going by. I thought it was him. I think you're being a little nervous, Leroy. You can safely come out. Nobody's going to... You better close your front door first. Now, Leroy, nobody's going to come in here. Snyder and... would. He'd do anything. He told me if he ever caught me, he was going to give me the Chinese water torture. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't take that too seriously. You don't know Snyder. He steals things. I saw him steal a whole handful of nuts out of a sack at the A&P. And he's been bothering us kids down at the playground all afternoon. No kidding, you better shut your door, Mr. Peavy. He's probably outside laying for me right now. Well, you stay here. I'll go see. I'll fix Mr. Snyder. If I catch him hanging around here, I, I, I'll send him away. <laughs> yeah, send him away. Yeah, it's getting a little dark. I don't see anybody, though. He's probably hiding. You don't see him. Come out of there, you. I see you. No, don't see a soul. He hides behind ash cans and things. You listen to me, boy. Go on away, you hear? And don't think I don't know who you are. You're Snyder. Now go on away. Nope, nobody around. <laughs> the coast is clear, Leroy. I think you can safely run along home now if you want to. I'm scared. It's dark out. Well, I won't force you if you'd rather stay around. Here we go! Evening, Peavy. Hey, you can come out, Leroy. It's just Judge Hooker. Good evening, Judge. Hi, Judge. Well, Leroy, what are you doing down here? I just stepped in to pay my bill, Peavy. You'll find the check inside there. Oh, thanks. I got it all addressed and ready to mail, and then I said to myself, now why should I waste a three-cent stamp on this when I'll be passing Peavy's place on the way home anyway? Hmm, very smart. I had the stamp all licked and ready to put on before I thought of it. Stamp uh, curled up on me. <laughs> but I guess I can use it again. A little mucilage, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, how are you fixed for mucilage, Judge? I don't know. Maybe you better give me some. Glad you mentioned it. No, I think we have it. Well, Leroy. Hi. Yeah, here we are. It says sticks it. The household adhesive of a thousand uses, unsurpassed for gluing wood, leather, china, glass, porcelain, metal, brick, cork, fabric. I just want to stick a stamp on an envelope. 
Guaranteed to hold under a strain of 75 pounds to the square inch. Well, that ought to do the trick. How much is that? 25 cents, Judge. Well, that's better than wasting a stamp. Oh. (laughs) And uh, a penny for the tax. Haven't they removed that penny yet? They've removed everything else. Not yet, Judge, but the minute they do, I plan to pass the benefits along to my customers. Well, there you are. Thank you. I think you'll enjoy that mucilage if it's as good as they say it is. Oh, uh, Judge. Yes? If you're on your way home, I think our friend Leroy here might be grateful for a lift. How about that, Leroy? Yeah. Gee, would you mind, Judge? Not at all. He's been waiting around here for a convoy. Convoy? It seems an enemy is lurking in the offing. How's that? A guy is laying for me. A boy in my class. You're not afraid of this fellow, are you, Leroy? (laughs) Yeah, kind of. Well, you come along. If he makes any trouble, we'll have the law on him. Gee, can you do that? My friend, I am the law. (laughs) Come along. I think I can explain, Bertie. Oh, good evening, Judge. Leroy, where the devil have you... Hello, Judge. Leroy, where have you been? Haven't I told you I want you home before dark, haven't I? Well, Now, I... don't be too hard on the boy, Gildy. Let me explain. Go upstairs and wash your hands. But they aren't dirty. Wash them. Okay. <laughs> that boy, really. I'm afraid you have a little problem with Leroy, Gildy. You don't have to tell me. I think you need to give him a little more self-confidence. If Leroy had any more self-confidence, I couldn't stand him. Nevertheless... I think that you ought to have a talk with the boy. You know where I found him just now? Down at the drugstore, hiding. Hiding? What's he done now? Leroy! No, 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 no. Now, don't call him. What? Never mind. Wash your hands. I am! Well, go ahead. Don't stand there talking about it. Go ahead. Well, Judge? This is something that's going to take a little understanding, Gildy. Of course, I don't know where he's going to get any of that from you, but... Get to the point, you old goat. Well, to begin with, I don't like to say this, but I'm afraid Leroy is just a little afraid of the dark. I don't believe it. No boy his age, and particularly no nephew of mine. All right, all right. That's merely my opinion, based on absolute fact. You'll be telling me next he still sucks his thumb. As to that, I couldn't say. (laughs) But I know that he wouldn't get out of the car just now unless I walked the door with him. Well, I'll be darned. It seems he has a bogeyman. A bogeyman named Snyder. Maybe I don't know the boy as well as I thought. If, who is this is Snyder? Boy in his class, evidently. Troublemaker. Why doesn't he knock his block off, for goodness sake? Possibly because he's scared to death of him. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a coward. Now, be fair to Leroy. Maybe you've overlooked part of his education. Well, maybe I have. I think every boy should have a little instruction in the manly art. Unless, of course, you want Leroy to grow up to be just a... Um, chip off the old block. Oh, is that so? (laughs) I'll show you who's an old block, and I'll teach Leroy to be a chip. Leroy, ain't you going to eat anything? No, thanks, Bertie. I'm full. Eat it. It'll put muscle on you. Okay. Miss Marjorie, don't tell me you don't like it. Oh, I love it, Bertie, but I'm afraid of getting muscle-bound. It, eat it. It's brain food. It's seaweed. Seaweed is kelp. This is kale. I wish it was spinach. Mr. Gill, leave a little more for you. Uh, just a very little bit, Bertie. Ha! <laughs> Leroy, there's something I want to take up with you. Yeah? Who is Snyder? Who is he? Yes. He's just a boy. What's his first name? Just Snyder, that's all. Well, what's his full name? What does the teacher call him? Snyder. He... Hmm. Why have I never heard of him? I don't know. You're afraid of him, aren't you? He's bigger than me. Understand, he picks on you and the younger boys. Why have you never told me about this? Because. Because why? You know, I'm supposed to snitch on people. You never hesitate to snitch on Piggy, and he's your friend. Why haven't you reported on this Snyder? Come on. Why? He said if I ever snitched on him, he'd 
put my eyes out. Ridiculous. There's one thing I loathe and despise, Leroy. It's a coward. If this boy picks on you, you ought to stand up to him. Instead of running and hiding in drugstores, how does that look? How does it look for me? You don't want me to be ashamed of you, do you? No. Uncle Mort, I don't blame Leroy. Snyder's a perfectly horrible boy. Well, you know him, my dear? I detest him. And I think Leroy's very smart to keep away from him. So do I. Thanks, Marge. <laughs> Nevertheless, my dear, we can't have Leroy being a coward. Who's a coward? Guy's bigger than me, that's all. Always remember David and Goliath, my boy. Goliath was ten times David's size. Twenty, maybe. Yeah, but David threw a rock. I always remember what you said about throwing rocks. It wasn't the rock that conquered Goliath, my boy. It was the element of surprise. David got there first. Yeah? Yeah. The best defense is an offense. Always remember that in your dealings with Snyder. Never start a fight, my boy. But if you ever get into one, be sure you strike the first blow. N never start... Did I ever tell you children about the time I licked Dan Murdoch at college? Hundreds of times. Well, sir, we got into a fight there one day. I don't think either of us remembers now what it was all about. But Dan made the mistake of challenging me in public. Well, I guess I weighed about 170 pounds. I was a little stout in those days. <laughs> and Dan must have weighed easily 200. Great big fellow. Well, sir, we squared off there and went right at it. I wasn't much of a fighter, but I had one blow I knew I could count on. I don't know where I ever developed it, but boy, it was a regular atom bomb. <laughs> How'd it go, huh? Can you show it to me? Uh, later I will, Leroy. Well, sir, I didn't wait around. I made a quick feint to his chin to throw him off his guard, and then I let him go with my atom bomb. Right in his solar plexus. And oh, brother, <laughs> Yeah, what happened? Leroy, you know perfectly well what happened. You've heard it a hundred times. Yeah, but I want to hear it. Well, sir, I'll never forget the look on Dan Murdoch's face when that blow landed. He looked at me absolutely silly for a moment, and then folded up like a big pudding and collapsed. <laughs> hey, hey, you forgot where his tongue hung out like a welcome mat. Yeah, that's right, his tongue hung out. <laughs> like a welcome mat. <laughs> Yeah, from that time on, we were the best of friends. <laughs> hey, will you show me your atom bomb punch, Unc, will you, huh? Well, I might. Yes, by George, I will. After dinner, I'll take you out in the hall there, Leroy, and I'll show you the secret. Oh, boy, wait till I see Snyder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, always remember, Leroy, this is a very dangerous blow. It can be very painful. Don't worry. You can even knock a man out with it, especially if you hit him right there. Uh, there? Uh, a little higher, there. Oh, oh, there. That's it. Don't ever hit him there, will you, Leroy? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Poor old Snyder. <laughs> Nothing tastes better than a salad in summer, but wintertime is salad time, too. And this winter, you can serve wonderful salads made with famous Kraft mayonnaise. Yes, it's once again available and in reasonable quantity. Now that the supply of fine salad oil is more plentiful, Kraft can make a fair amount of mayonnaise, although Miracle Whip salad dressing continues to be scarce because of the sugar shortage. So look for the superior mayonnaise that glorifies any salad. Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise at your food dealer's. It has a delicacy of flavor, a richness that only choice ingredients can give. Fine salad oil, selected eggs, fragrant vinegar and spices. And for a final crowning touch of perfection, fresh lemon juice. And the flavor of Kraft mayonnaise is not by any means the whole story. Its texture, too, is marvelous. A special beater patented by Kraft gives it a velvet smoothness you could never accomplish in your own kitchen. No need to bother with making your own now that this truly superior mayonnaise, Kraft Kitchen Fresh Mayonnaise, is once again available. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. While strolling homeward from the office on Saturday noon, he spies a lady ahead of him and quickens his pace. As he draws a beam of his quarry, he is surprised and delighted to find he has been pursuing the school principal, Eve Goodwin. Hello, Eve. Hello. Oh, hello, Throckmorton. I didn't recognize you from the... 
I mean, have you got a new coat or something? No. Where are you going? I was just going home. Had lunch? Yes, I have. So have I. How about stopping in someplace for a soda? Oh, I can't. I'm sorry. Gosh, I haven't seen you in quite a while. You haven't called me. I've been pretty busy. How about this afternoon? I have a parents' meeting this afternoon. That's why I have to get right home. I don't believe you ever think about me, Throckmorton, except by accident. That's not so, Eve. I think about you a lot. Thought about you a couple of days ago, but I was tied up. <laughs> What's so funny? You, but I like you. Well, all right then. Do you mind if I walk home with you? That would be very nice. Since I've run into you, there's something I'd like to ask you about Leroy. Leroy? I knew it. He's been finishing his homework in an awful hurry. Mm, it's not his schoolwork. At least I haven't had any complaints about it from Miss Creedle. No, this is something new. It surprised me. Just tell me what it is, Eve. I'll wail it out of him. You wouldn't. Wouldn't what? Punish him physically. Huh? Oh, no. Oh, no. When I tell him to listen, he listens. Sometimes. What's he been up to? I've never thought Leroy would turn out to be belligerent. Belligerent? He seems to have a chip on his shoulder the last few days. He actually seems to be trying to pick fights with the other boys. What's the harm in that? Well, if you could see him. I watched him walk right up to quite a big boy and pull his shirt tail out. <laughs> I don't think there's anything amusing about it. But, him. Eve, men look at these things differently. It's masculine psychology. Nonsense. No, I mean it. There comes a time when a man has to put up or shut up, Eve. A time when he's a man or a mouse. But Leroy's a child. He's getting to be a man. What's more, he's got Gildersleeve blood in his veins. You're talking like a child yourself. Getting to be a man doesn't mean he has to push people around. He's got to learn to fight someday. Why? Well, because everybody does. Nothing is ever settled by a fist fight. No one but small boys and barbarians believes that fighting is the answer. Do you get in fist fights with people who haven't paid their water bills? Well, no, but... Uh, Do you punch people who dis disagree with you on politics? I've considered it. <laughs> but I didn't do it. Then why encourage Leroy to go around picking fights with other boys? I don't encourage him. You don't discourage him. As a matter of fact, when I told you just now he was turning into a rowdy, you were quite pleased, weren't you? Eve, how could you think such a thing? Weren't you a little pleased, Throckmorton, secretly? Well, i glad to know he's not a sissy. I don't think any boy with Gildersleeve blood in his veins is likely to turn out a sissy. Uh, you mean that, Eve? <laughs> yes. But I do wish you'd speak to Leroy. Oh, I will. Good. Well, it's nice to have seen you. Uh, aren't you going to ask me in for a minute? Oh, I'd like to, but I've got to dress and go out again right away. Some other time? Some other time. You always say that. Gosh, I never get to talk to you about anything but Leroy. Leroy's a fascinating subject. <sniffs> Goodbye, Throckmorton. Goodbye, Eve. And you will tell Leroy it's silly to fight. Oh, sure. Goodbye. Nuts. <laughs> I don't know if I'll tell him or not. Yes, it's me. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Could I have some money? Francie and I are going to Barney's. Hmm, quite a welcome. Where's your allowance? I'm saving it to buy Christmas presents. It makes me feel wonderfully independent. Marjorie, if you're saving, that's one thing. If you're going to some jukebox joint, that's another. You can't have your cake and eat it, too. Oh, Anki, that's such a cliché. Now, see here, young lady. A cliché is something that's been said so often. I know what a cliché is. Well, you don't have to yell. I'm only asking for 50 cents so I won't have to take it out of Leroy's present. I won't have you robbing your brother. Here, bring me 50 cents change. Thanks, Anki, darling. I wouldn't have taken it out of Leroy, really. Yes, yes. Where is Leroy? Oh, he's around somewhere. Leroy! Oh, Leroy! What? When I call you, I want you to come. What? Come here! Goodbye, Anki. I'll be home by five. See that you are. It gets dark at five. Don't worry. I don't want you out in the streets with a lot of young... A lot of respect I get around here. Did you want me, Unc? Yes. I do not enjoy talking to you from a range of 100 yards. What's this Miss Goodwin tells me about your behavior at school? 
behavior? She says you've been picking fights. She's a big... Leroy. I haven't picked one fight. Everybody's scared of my atom bomb punch. Oh? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I had quite a discussion with Miss Goodwin. Nothing is settled by a fist fight, you know, my boy. Huh? Fighting is an outmoded, barbaric method of settling differences. See that you avoid it. Is that clear? But I thought you said... Fighting is silly. Do you understand? I guess so. On the other hand, there are times... Yeah? There are times when there is no other honorable course. Do you understand? I'm not sure. Well, never mind whether you understand or not. What I want is obedience. Now go out someplace and play. Gosh, clear as mud. No, no, Craig, that's not the idea. Hold the board a little higher. Like this? That's better. Now hold it while I go out and take a look. Yeah, that's pretty good. A little higher. I can't reach any higher. Okay, just hold it then. How long do I have to hold it? Till I tell you. What you doing? Never mind, just hold on to that board. My hands are cold. Listen, if you're too little to hold up a board while I find a nail, I won't let you be in on this hut. Well, hurry up. I have to find the right nail, you know. Here it is. Now hold it up against there tight. My hands are cold. Oh, quit crying. Now hang on. Hold it up. Why don't you hold it and let me hammer the nail? Because you're too little. You gotta know something to hammer. Okay, you can let go now. Say, it looks pretty good. Can I come out and look? I guess so. Then get that other board. Say, it looks super. Well, well. The kids are building a hut. Huh? Oh, hello, Snyder. Some hut. Where'd you get the boards? Out of his father's garage. I bet you stole them. We did not. How'd you like me to tell the cops on you? We didn't steal them. Who are you? Craig. <laughs> Some lousy hut. I bet I could kick it over. You better not, Snyder. Watch me. Hey! Watch! You dirty guy! Who you calling a dirty guy? Come here. Let go of me. This is judo, see? Quit twisting his arm, Snyder. Oh! Well, I want you. Oh, getting tough, huh? Expecting little Craig, I suppose, weren't you? Well, we'll just see what your uncle's got to say about all this. I didn't touch him, Mr. Bullard. <laughs> Come along. That's not the point, Gildersleeve. The point is that Leroy was picking on a little fellow half his size. The point is, Bullard, that Leroy didn't touch him. Is that right, Leroy? Sure, it's like I told you. The point is, Leroy tried to defend your boy from a bully bigger than either of them. Poppycock. Where do you think he got the black eye? Craig hit him. Oh, for... In self-defense. <laughs> is that true, Leroy? I told you, Uncle Snyder hit me. Snyder hit Leroy, and Craig laughed at Leroy, and so Leroy chased him. What was Craig crying for? Because he's a crybaby. Now, see here, Gildersleeve. There are things a man can't take lying down. That's right. My boy's half Leroy's size. Leroy must have done something to him. Are you implying my Leroy's not telling the truth? I am. Bullard, I can't take that lying down. Well? Step outside. <laughs> Very well. Oh, boy, the atom bomb punch. Well, where do you want to go? The porch is all right, I guess. No use getting out there in the snow. <laughs> 
Very well. Now, you say my boy's a crybaby? I do. And I say Leroy's a liar. <laughs> Get out of the way, Leroy. Put up your hands, Mord. I'm ready for you. Why, George? Why, golly. In the future, you keep your kid away from Leroy. You? You keep Leroy away from Craig. Tell Craig to stay off my property. And you stay off my property. Yes, sir, you stay off my property. I'll only be too glad to. Coward. Well, I guess I showed him. I thought you were going to use the atom bomb punch. The what? Oh, uh, well, I was going to, and then I remembered what Miss Goodwin said. Nothing is ever settled by a fistfight. But, Aunt, you said there are times... Remember what Miss Goodwin said. If you'd remembered it, you wouldn't have that shiner. The Great Gildersleeve will be back again very shortly. Friends, there's an urgent appeal and need for more nurses in the hospitals of the United States, and we'd like to suggest to all the young women listening that they consider seriously making this their profession. Nursing offers excellent pay and interesting work, and more than that, the tremendous satisfaction that comes from aiding one's fellow man. High school graduates or college students between the ages of 17 and 35 are eligible to learn nursing. It's a three-year course with the time divided between classroom work and actual hospital experience. You can find out how to apply for admission in any of the nearly 1,300 accredited schools of nursing by talking to the vocational guidance counselor of your local school system or at your local hospital or school of nursing. We'd like to ask you young women to think seriously of nursing as a life work. Hello, Miss Fenwick? Guess who this is? Oh, how'd you know? What are you doing tonight, Miss Fenwick? Oh, why not? Can't you write letters some other time? Oh. 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 Well, I'll go to the movies with somebody else. What do you think of that? Goodbye. I'll go with you, Unc. You go to bed. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley as Leroy, Louise Erickson as Marjorie, and Lillian Randolph as Bertie. Judge Hooker is Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand as Mr. Peavy. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Remember tomorrow to ask your grocer for the wonderful craft product called Frizz. Frizz makes delicious ice cream right in your refrigerator. Velvety smooth, rich ice cream with plenty of cream and milk in it. It's easy to make any flavor you like with Frizz. Just add water, a little sugar, and freeze according to directions on the package. You get six generous servings from one package. Because Frizz is made by an exclusive process that retains the fresh cream flavor, and because it freezes smoothly, Frizz ice cream is simply delicious. Frizz, F-R-I-Z-Z. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.